Okay, here we go. Next lesson, special forms of factoring. There's two types of special forms, and the first type is called difference of squares. So you've probably seen this in your class. This is when your teacher will write something like x squared minus y squared, or maybe they write a squared minus b squared. I'll use this formula over here, although the letters really don't matter. So the key thing is, is that there's a difference and that the two quantities here are squared. So let's take a look at this example. We're going to do nine of these. They're actually quite short in this video, although there's many examples, it's probably not going to take too long. So x squared is indeed a perfect square. Could you write nine as something squared? That's the question. So nine is what squared? Did you guess three? Well, if you guess three, you're right. And that is the form in the difference of squares template. So remember, our formula is a squared minus b squared. So that becomes a plus b, a minus b. We'll use this formula for the rest of the slides that I show you. So in this case, a and b are the x and the 3. You would simply write x plus 3 and x minus 3. Okay, so the next uh, few examples will be similar in nature. Again, is 4 a perfect square? Absolutely. It's 2 squared. I'm keeping the numbers small in these first examples just so that you don't have too much uh, issues with the arithmetic. So you would write x plus 2, x minus 2. Next example. Wait a second. 1? Is 1 a perfect square? Of course it is. It's 1 squared. If you want to know how to work on these better, just remember that it's nice to have a quick memory of perfect squares. And I'll just write down up to 7 squared here, but you get the point. In this case, you would write the answer as x plus 1, x minus 1. As a footnote, if this was a plus sign, then you cannot factor it. So it must be a difference of squares. That's why the word difference is in the name. Okay, so now we're getting a little bit more complicated because the number in front of the x, the coefficient, is not a 1, it's a 4. But 4 is a square. It's a perfect square. It's 2 squared. I'm going to do this. I'm going to write the 2 and the x and wrap them together into one bracket. And 25, of course, is 5 squared. And that's how you approach this question. We can use the template 2x plus 5 and 2x minus 5. Now you might think, okay, it's not bad. We've covered half the examples. And it really isn't. But in a future video where I start to combine all the methods, I can definitely turn this up a notch. Although I will end this video with one example that's pretty tricky. Okay, now the exponent isn't a 2. It's a 4. But that's an even number. 121 is 11 squared, and x to the 4 is x squared squared. So there you have it. As long as the number here is even, the exponent, you can still apply the difference of squares template. We can split it now as 11x squared plus y and 11x squared minus y. Okay, this looks overwhelming, but remember what I said earlier, even exponents, and there's a minus sign there, so everything is good. 100, of course, is a nice number, it is 10 squared. So, if you're like, I don't know how to do this part here, well, just remember there's a pattern, you always divide the exponent by 2, and you can put the 2 here. And if you're like, why does that work? If you recall your exponent laws, you would multiply these exponents to get back what you started. See, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 4 is 8. Over here, the 100 is actually just 10 all squared, 
and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So there you go. A template for difference of squares. Let's write this one out. a squared b to the 4 plus 10c cubed. I could copy and paste that, but I'll just do it freehand here. a squared b to the 4 minus 10c cubed. All right, we have three more to go. This one is going to involve uh, a secondary step. So here, it looks like the previous one. You can divide the exponent by 2 and write x squared all squared. And 16 is, of course, 4 squared. So we go through the motions here. Now you might be like, do I write the plus sign first and then the minus one? Or do I put the minus sign first? Or does it matter? In reality, it doesn't matter which way you write it but there's a motivation for why I put the negative second. And the reason is, in situations like this question, we actually can do another difference of squares within the difference of squares. So this one, it reminds me of those uh, Russian dolls, the one doll inside the other. We call that a nested form. So here, we can take the second pair here, this difference, and redo that. Just remember, that's x squared minus 2 squared. So I can bounce back here and say that's x plus 2. Again, I wrote the plus 1 first because maybe you have to go again. Maybe it's one of those triple or quadruple ones. Perhaps you've seen one in class already. This one here is a little scary. And you could do this question one of two ways. One is that it already has the template and you can apply the template immediately. Let's try that out. So you could write 2x plus 3 and plus, and then the second item, which is 2x minus 3. And then write the exact same thing down again with a minus sign. Now you can see here it's a lot of writing, but it actually, compared to the level of difficulty that you thought it was, hopefully it's not too much writing. Let's simplify all this. So we have 2x, and this plus sign really means the bracket here is not necessary. So we have 2x and 2x, and I'll get rid of that bracket too. So that's 4x, and 3 minus 3 is 0. Well, that cleaned up nicely. Over here, the negative is going to switch these guys. So let's take that extra step there and be very delicate. See, two negative signs make a positive. So we got 2x here, 2x there. Wait a second, this looks really funny. We got 4x. I was expecting something really messier, but maybe you were expecting some long answer. It turns out it's pretty quick, pretty short answer. Now, what are alternative ways of solving this? One way would just be to foil this and foil that and then just clean it all up and factor a trinomial possibly. And there's other ways you could do this question, but really I think uh, this is the most effective and it helps us practice difference of squares. In this final example, we ramp it up a bit by making the exponent 16. But if you use the skills that we've talked about earlier, you can see that 16 is an even number. Now, 1 is actually 1 squared, but I'm not going to write that down to save some writing. And of course, you can um, avoid that step if you prefer to save time. So 16 divided by 2 is 8. I put the plus first, and then I put the minus 1. Notice that this can go again. So this one's just going to copy all the way down. So I'm going to do some trickery there in a second. This x to the 8 minus 1 can be x to the 4 plus 1 and x to the 4 minus 1. And then this x to the 4 minus 1 can go again. So this question actually requires more copying than it does analysis. Now I'll just copy all this stuff out. You probably have finished the question already if you have uh, the knack for what was going on earlier. 
So x to the 4 minus 1 is x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 1. Now, at this point is where I give up. And I'm going to use my little lasso here and just kind of cheap this out. Can I squeak it out? Almost. I'll take that copy and paste. It's good enough. Cost me a bracket, but that's okay. All right. I lost the 8 there. Now, this thing here, you're going to factor it as a difference of squares. That'll be x plus 1 and x minus 1. And good grief, that is the question. So what's next on the agenda? I'm going to cover something called perfect square trinomials. So look for that in the playlist. Thank you for your time.